I have done a lot of work of degendering my body, like looking at myself in the mirror and being like, this body is not a girl body. So how are you pregnant? Do you have a uterus? Do you have this? Do you have that? Are you female? Are you female? Are you female? Do I female? My ideal gender affirming care as like a trans non-binary person is kind of weird. And the thing is, is that I love it. And I would love to get a single mastectomy. Yes, I want one boob. I want one boob and one no boob. And then I want to like wear some like strange clothes that I made myself that'll like cover the boob part and then just let my other non-boob out in the open. So people will just look at me like. Do you know what would be cheaper and better for you? Therapy. I don't want to take testosterone, but not for my whole life. I want to take it for a couple years, get the permanent effects, and then go off of it. And maybe I might decide to go back on it later, but it's kind of just going to be like a fluid thing. Oh yes, I've seen this many times before, unfortunately. I've seen it both in Denmark, where I'm from, but of course also in the US. And that's women who play around with testosterone. I think you must be struggling a lot with your mental health since you want that. Since you want your body to be gender neutral. Which you can't make your body to be, but playing around with medicine like this is dangerous. To be honest, I don't care that people like this want to mess up their bodies. However, what's important and what I do care about is if medical professionals let them mess up their bodies and their lives. Because people like this are clearly not well, and people who are not well have always existed and will always exist. So it's up to the doctors to just say, no, ain't gonna happen, sweetie. You need help. And I don't mean that in a mean way, of course I don't. I truly hope that this girl gets help. I have done a lot of work of degendering my body, like looking at myself in the mirror and being like, this body is not a girl body. Bodies are not gendered. Bodies are not girl or boy bodies. They're just, they're just human bodies. And whatever gender that body is, is the gender that you think that body is. If your body has nothing to do with your gender, why do you have to change it in order to affirm your gender? You don't have to hate your body to be trans. And when I, when, when I was younger, I thought I had to hate my body to be trans. I thought it was a prerequisite, like if you don't hate your body, you can't be trans. You have to hate yourself. Hate yourself or you're not transgender. Which is such a flawed way of looking at it. Why are you looking at the symptoms of a certain disorder? Why are you looking at what it means to be this or that? Why can't you just be yourself? It seems like you really want to be trans, so instead of acknowledging that you're not trans, you're changing the definition of what it means to be trans. You can try to change that definition all you want, but it's not going to benefit you. Transgender people shouldn't have to hate themselves to be trans. Being transgender for me is more about the euphoria I get when I feel like myself and when other people perceive me in the way that aligns with my self-image. Um, rather than like shitting all over myself because I'm a terrible person who looks ugly and I'll never pass. Are you okay? That's not the definition of what it means to be trans. I didn't hate my body, but I felt extremely dysphoric because of my body. That's the difference and it's pretty important. Euphoria is kind of irrational, it's exaggerated. When I transitioned, when I got the surgeries, when I experienced the effects of testosterone, I felt more and more normal. And it's so sad to me to listen to these girls who think that they're trans but they're not talking about chasing euphoria in their lives. That's of course a sign of really bad mental health. And I feel bad for them, honestly. But to transition will not be the answer. You need someone who truly cares about you, a therapist who is not an ideologue, who doesn't care if you truly deal with gender dysphoria or not, someone who is a professional who wants to know what's going on with you. And why in the year 2023, doctors are still forcing their trans patients to sit there and misgender themselves multiple times over and f over again to satiate their confusion and curiosity. I hate to admit this, but I had to watch this multiple times in order to understand what he's talking about. <laughs> so what he's talking about is if trans people talk to medical professionals, the trans person has to acknowledge their biology because it's pretty relevant if we're talking about physical health. And he thinks that's a problem. Let's figure out why. And how they seem to just 
not be able to understand how I said I take testosterone because I am transgender, my body doesn't produce its own, and then later saying how, like, referencing my pregnancy and this and that, and she just didn't get it. Just had to, like, really drill it in that she was confused, despite the fact that I said I am transgender, I take testosterone. I wasn't there, maybe she was an asshole, maybe she was a bigot, who knows? She's most likely not. And yes, that's based on his face piercings and green hair. You don't think that it's confusing to sit in front of someone who looks like a man saying that he was pregnant once? And then her just being, so, so how are you pregnant? Do you have a uterus? Do you have this? Do you have that? Are you female? Are you female? Are you female? Are you female? That's right, take a deep breath, chill. You do not look female, but you are female. That is why you can give birth. And that was your decision, right? So what's the problem? What is wrong with her being curious? What is wrong with her asking questions? Maybe she was very old and she didn't know the term transgender. Maybe you had to explain that you are a biological female, you gave birth, and now you live your life as a man. You have transitioned into living your life as a man. Is that so hard? If she hypothetically becomes rude, she's rude, she's an a-hole. Those people will unfortunately always exist. But I'm under the impression that you made her more confused than necessary. I'm under the impression that she didn't talk like that. No matter what, she needed you to clarify something, you should just have done it in a very classy way and moved on with your life. But you can't, right? Because you being trans is not what you are, it's who you are, right? And if people ask you questions that you don't like, you feel like they're attacking your entire personhood. But guess what? You should be more than a trans person. You should actually see yourself as more than a trans person. You would automatically become less sensitive if you do so. I'm also saying it because I used to be like you. I used to think that trans is my entire personality, it was who I am, not just what I am, and it made me more sensitive. But I quickly figured out that it's not who I am. I am so much more than being a trans person, and my mental health is better. I wonder why. Anyway, I'm still not any closer to getting the referral that I need for the bronchoscopy to find out about the hole in my lung. But at least my new PCP got me to say that I'm female. So there's the American healthcare system in a nutshell. Do you think that the word female is a slur? I'm confused. Your doctors need to know what your biological sex is. They can't help you, they can't treat you if you're sick, if they just assume you're a male. You look 100% like a man, good for you. But what really sucks about being a trans person is, after your transition, you still have to clarify to some people that I was born as the opposite sex. Deal with it. You're an adult and a parent, but it mentally disturbs you to hear that you're a female? Grow up. Your life is gonna be so much more tough, unnecessarily tough, if you can't handle the truth. I have a question about dating non-binary people. So the other day I had a non-binary person ask me to be their boyfriend. And I said, sure, that is fine. As long as you could tell me what to call you. And they said, whatever. And I said, no, you need to pick something. And they said, whatever you'll choose will be fine. So we reviewed the following options. Partner, doesn't sound right. I don't know. Um, boyfriend, they're telling me that doesn't really exactly fit them. So next. Uh, they friend, sounds a little weird. So I don't know. What do you guys call a non-binary person that you are dating non-monogamously? Sorry if this is an old conversation, but I am kind of at a loss right now. What? <laughs> How ironic this is coming from. Don't put me in a box crowd. I don't need labels to exist crowd. Why can't you just date an F without needing a label? I want to say this behavior is really childish, but I really hope, really, really hope that children don't think this way. Unfortunately, they don't. Children know that there are males and there are females in society. And that's it. Halas. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, remember to hit subscribe and the notification bell. If you want, you can support me with a small donation under Super Thanks. It helps me out so, so much. So thank you on beforehand. You can become a member of this channel where I make exclusive content. So if you want to join us, there's a link down below. Follow me on social media and I'll see you all in my next video. Peace out.